this month on Tanatula Safari Science, I thought we'd head out and look for something that a lot of people from around the world hope to see while they're on safari out in Africa. Now, a lot of people hope to see leopards, lions, elephants, and I mean rightly so, that's the main reason people go on safari. However, as you can see around us at the moment, it's very green, it's lush, it's beautiful, and that's an indication that we've had a lot of rain. And when things are this green and this wet, it means the bugs have come out. And there's one particular type of bug, well, one particular family of bugs that I'd like to show you today. You may have already worked out what that is, but you're going to have to just stick around and find out. There's several thousand species of them across the planet, and about 800 that are unique to South Africa alone. They're incredible little species that some studies would suggest they're able to navigate just by using the Milky Way. If you haven't worked out by now what I'm talking about, it's the humble dung beetle. Hey buddy. Of all those thousands of dung beetles that one might expect to find, they all fit into four broad categories. Now the first one is the paracoprid. Now the paracoprid makes his living by burrowing underneath the dung and into the ground, from where he can just climb up, grab the food that he needs, and go back underground. Underneath there he can also reproduce and lay his eggs or her eggs in safety. The next one is the endocoprid. And when you get up close and personal with these dung piles, you begin to see a lot of little movement here and there. And those are the endocoprids, the ones that live inside the dung, and reproduce inside the dung. The next one, probably the most famous, is the telecoprid. As the name would suggest, to telephone, you know, getting further away. These are the famous ones that roll their balls of dung. And as soon as they've got a nice ball, like this one over here, he's busy working. As soon as they've got a nice ball rolled, they begin to roll it away in the hope that they'll attract a female. And once he has successfully attracted a mate, she simply lands on the side of the ball of dung and offers no help whatsoever while the male pushes it around, every once in a while climbing atop the ball to have a good look around, get his bearings and figure out where he would like to be. Once the couple has found a spot that they would prefer to burrow in, they begin to dig in an effort to bury the ball. But before they leave the ball, they mate and remarkably only lay one egg inside the ball before covering it up and flying off to repeat the process again. Now, the fourth type of dung beetle is the kleptocoprids. Now, these cheeky buggers will rock up out of nowhere and, as the name would suggest, try and steal a telecoprid's beautiful ball of poop. So, as you can see, there's a story to be told at every level of this incredible ecosystem, from the big guys all the way to those tiny little guys at the bottom level even if it is a love story that revolves around a pile of poo. Now, maybe if we could show a little bit more respect for that lower level, just like we do for every level, and not drive over piles of elephant dung in the future. As you can destroy an entire micro ecosystem and thousands and thousands of insects and dung beetles all in one foul swoop. Now, if you have any further questions on dung beetles, what they get up to, how they do it, and why they do it, please feel free to drop a comment below and I'll happily get back to you. Until next time, this is Tula Safari Science. See ya.